Look, I never meant to hurt Roger. I fell in love with cinema as a child and I've always used filmmaking as like a learning experience. I like to push myself to try and use each film project as an opportunity to sharpen my skill set and learn something new that I can put into my art. No Return was very much a learning experience for me. With each project, I always try to get a little better each time and you know take the overall experience and put it all together moving forward to make sure that this project, No Return, is my best film to date. Take this tip. When does Helena usually go to bed? You swing by my place and give me another tip. In December of 2019, I started to write uh, No Return, and I set out to just make a dramatic film with like really dark undertones. And as it kind of progressed, it changed a great deal. I mean, this script was unlike anything that I'd written before, and so I was really excited to get it out there, to get some feedback from other people. I read the script two times, three, like, I, I, I love this script. I really do love this script. The story was great. It's really one that shows how your choices kind of lead you, you know, to a final point. Sometimes it's a good thing. In the case of this film, um, not so fabulous. You know, in life, we have bad decisions and good decisions. And of course, good decision leads to good consequences, while bad decisions lead to bad consequences and I think this film really highlights that. It's easy to see that when you're going through things you don't see them as big events. You don't see them as kind of paving your way to this final destination. So, so I really think that a lot of people will relate to this film. And the first step was casting. So in January as I got a completed draft I started that casting process. There were a few actors that came to mind that I thought would be great for the film, but I wasn't sure if it would work out. Everybody has different schedules and the content is very dark. Um, so I just did an open casting call where we took audition tapes and we narrowed those down and, and did a second round of auditions. In some cases we did a third run. So we sent an audition to Mr. White. He made me do a, another audition and then I did not get the role of Aubrey. But I did get in as a party guest, but then he decided to turn Jacob into a girl named Jessica, and he gave me the role of Jessica. It was so awesome to see all these great audition tapes. We received a lot of interest, which blew my mind. I was able to place actors in each of the roles. There were only two actors in our primary cast that I had worked with before, and the rest were all brand new. I'd never met them face to face. Ian and Amber I had worked with in the past, and Amber I had worked with on Ripper Christ and also City Garden. I had worked with Nick previously, and I had worked with Ian previously, who plays my boyfriend Randy. And so I was excited to work with them again, but I was also super excited to meet new people because it's always one of the funnest parts about filming. You meet and connect with so many new people, and I love that. Now Ian I had worked with on City Garden, Parasite, and lovesick, a funny little side note. Including No Return, Ian has been involved in four films that I worked on, and three of those films, he was either puking or being puked on. When it came to casting Helena and Stanley Poe, I needed to find two actors that were really versatile and committed to the roles because they're quite dark. I needed to find like the perfect actors for those roles. It's my first lead role and Helena is a very complex character. She's a loving mother, but the interaction with her and her husband Stanley, she is literally a force to be reckoned with. She doesn't take anything from him and she doesn't let him get away with anything either. My background primarily is an improv comedy. I'm mostly a comedian. The funnies, the laughs is what I'm usually going for. But I was really struck by how much I loved this script when I read it. No return. It was very dark. It is very twisted. And that's kind of what I'm drawn to when it comes to my favorite movies. I love American Psycho. I love Silence of the Lambs. I think Requiem for a Dream is an all-time great. Those are all very dark, twisted 
movies that really delve into the human mind. And so it was, it was a thrill to finally be cast as Stanley Poe in this movie. What we do is our business. So who is Stanley Poe? It's a very dark, twisted, demented, psychological profile when you look at Stanley Poe and that's part of what intrigued me in terms of being a comedian trying to dig deep into those darker emotions. Stanley Poe is a family man or at one time was a family man who still likes the illusion of having the nuclear family with his wife and his two beautiful daughters but he's losing it. He's tired of that. He's tired of the responsibility, the obligation, the financial constraints of raising and supporting a family. He's a heavy drinker, and that drinking contributes to a very abusive anger. And the next role I was concerned about filling was the role of the newscaster. The funny thing is we received a ton of audition tapes. Elijah, he seemed like very committed, and he had like this comedic timing and delivery that really just worked for the role. I had a lot of fun. I had many suits just in case. I even bought shoes. I had to get the whole attire. One thing I don't like, though, is that... In a moment of recording, I, in the process of like, getting dressed, I forgot how to tie a tie. So if you ever look directly in the middle, like just look at my tie, it's at an angle. And don't judge me, I just really haven't had that much practice of wearing like a suit tie. Uh, and I apologize for that. So when it came time to, to cast our extras, I ended up casting six ladies, and three of which I had worked with before. So Jamie, I'd worked with on the set of Parasite. I've worked with Nick before, I've worked with Ian before, I've worked with Jen before. I really enjoyed this experience. And Natalie, I'd worked with on a short horror film called A Slice Before Christmas. And then Alex worked with me on a promo video for a film festival. And the other three extras who I had never met before our shoot are Jessica, Tiffany, and Emmy. This is the second film that I've worked on, and I look forward to working on many more. It was very smooth. It was comfortable. It was great. Well, we're not using plain white paper plates like some bottom-of-the-barrel garbage family. We got the best party plates money can buy. My approach to finding a crew for an independent film shoot is just to, to really surround myself with competent folks, like some, some skillful, artistic people that can pull their own weight. That's my whole approach on this. So when, when it came time to, to find a crew, the first person that I knew I wanted to work with is Gage. I had worked with Gage one time before on a short film called The Brunch of the Apocalypse, and he did lighting and some cinematography. So I reached out to him and asked if he would be lighting director for No Return. He hit me up, sent me the first draft of the script, and I immediately fell in love with it, told him I would do anything I could to help him out with the project. He ended up doing more than just lighting. He also did audio, and he did some location securing for us as well. The next person that I knew I wanted on my team is Jin Wills, and Jin is awesome. I've worked with her in various capacities before, and I just know she's like a really well-rounded filmmaker, and I was excited to have her on set. One of the things I could say is in reading the script, I really like how it grabbed my attention right away because you know, is you only have like a few seconds to really grab the attention and to keep the person interested, and this film definitely does that. She gave me some good tips on how to manage my props, and she was invaluable to have around. I also knew that I wanted to work with James Pinson again. I had worked with James on a few projects here and there. So James came on board as audio recorder and also as an associate producer. James was always an open ear to kind of talk to and bounce ideas off of. So we were having a pre-production meeting, and he suggested Chris Ott as DP for this project. So I called Chris to talk through the project and I know Chris had done a lot of music videos and some camera work for some other films so I was excited to bring him on to No Return. I have to tip my hat to our makeup expert on set, Autumn Hatcher. She was a delight to work with. I was helping out on a film called The Group and she was an actor and she was also working practical effects for that film. I told her the specific effects that I needed and she was on board right away. But it was something like I'd never seen before. The person who made the dead cat body was very, very artistic. Murphy's Law, two nights before we begin shooting, I get a giant zit right here between my eyes, right above my nose, and Autumn was a pro. Totally set me up with the makeup. Autumn was so great, but some of the makeup that she did to bring 
together some of the most visceral moments of this film were A+. Plus. Thank you to all of my crew. You all came through and made an awesome product, so thank you very much. All right, come on, let's go, let's go. Let's see daddy, let's see daddy, come on. I didn't do it! I'm the kind of director that likes to leave space within my script for the actors to interpret and then offer their input because that creates like a true collaboration. I think it makes for a better, a better product. I was a bit camera shy. I was a bit nervous. I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, I studied my lines, but I don't know if I'll cut, I'll cut it. But, you know, he worked with me. He said, hey, take your time. Breathe. You got this. I'm like, I appreciate it. He wasn't a jerk. It, like, I, as... You know, some directors might be in the world. Like, I was surprised. He, he's really taking his time. All right, just cool. Redo it. This time, more passion. Uh, just directing me. Just be this better. Just bringing out a better character in me. And I really appreciate that, honestly. One of the pivotal moments in No Return as we watch my character, Stanley Poe, in the middle of his meltdown comes when he's grilling burgers for the, the birthday party for one of his daughters. And I can't thank Nick White enough for his direction and his willingness to allow me, as an improv comedian, to, to, to riff a little bit, to kind of ad-lib or improvise some of the lines that weren't originally on paper. And, and I'm losing my mind in this scene, so I'm talking to Roger the Cat as if I am kind of the waiter at a restaurant because he gets a hold of some of the burger meat that I'm grilling. And so I really kind of start to mock Roger. Oh, I hope you enjoy that scene as much as I enjoyed shooting it. The way that that scene ends is not indicative of how I feel about animals. I love animals. This is my collection of Beanie Babies. We've got Robert, Jimmy, Bonzo, and Jonesy. And then Dudley. Dudley was my family pet. He was a mud black dog from the 80s. And so when you watch the grilling burger scene, know that Stanley Poe has this volcanic eruption of anger. That's not me. I love animals. My time on set was just one of the highlights of this year, to be honest. It was one of the highlights. I had so much fun. But besides that, there wasn't food. There wasn't food. So next time, Nick got to you gotta bring some food on set. <laughs> well, my experience was really, 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 really great. I think working with the staff was great. Everybody was organized on time. Everything went really well. And then the kids, of course, were phenomenal. The actors gave their 100%. I play Jessica and she's like enthusiastic and she's mature for her age. And she's just a fun character to play. Little naughty. <laughs> I mean, all kids are a little naughty, so. Two actresses who played Stanley Poe's daughters in No Return were just wonderful, who were so bright and so good and so natural on camera. One of them is Roz, the daughter of Jimmy Mack. My work in comedy, I've crossed paths many times with Jimmy head writer for Shadowbox, super funny guy, and his daughter is a chip off the old block because she has this great personality and is so funny, and she makes great scrambled eggs. She scrambled the eggs for our breakfast scene, which was awesome. Great job, Roz. And then there was Harper, this beautiful young girl who played my other daughter, beautiful red hair, so much personality, so much life, and they brought so much to the movie. It was so much fun working with both of them as their fake daddy, as they like to call me. I loved meeting the people that I worked with, especially my sister, like, set sister. She's really nice. I also liked working with my dad, set dad, and my set mom. I didn't really know anybody, but the cast was a pleasure to work with. I mean, they were wonderful, they were very kind, and then the crew as well, they were just a pleasure to work with. They were very kind. I just had so much fun. It was just such a wonderful experience. As, as dark as the content is, it truly was just so rewarding. I spent all that fucking money 
I tried not to identify with some of my big pop culture references, but in hindsight, when I look back, I can't believe that some of my favorite uh, characters from movies and shows that I've watched in the past didn't inform some of the darkness that is Stanley Poe. So Stanley is, is kind of obsessed with youth. He's a grown man who never really grew up. He's kind of stuck in his teenage years, so he's, he's kind of obsessed with the family babysitter and younger women. And so there's a scene where I'm ogling beautiful women when we're shopping for birthday party supplies. When I look back on that now, I think of Al Bundy from Married with Children, kind of the pervert, kind of a sexist pig. I hope I brought that to the screen, even though that, that really is not who I am. Um, I thought a little bit in hindsight that, that this guy is a little bit Jack Torrance, Jack Nicholson's character from The Shining, heavy drinker, has the family he's trying to raise but gets completely lost along the way. And then, of course, one of my all-time favorite movies, again, to, to get inside my mind, is American Psycho. And so, certainly, I, I see threads of, of those personalities kind of coming together as Stanley Poe. And I'm a relatively nice guy with a good heart, but Stanley Poe, I think you're going to be kind of shocked and taken aback by how dark his downward spiral becomes as he falls apart. So the last piece of the puzzle was really Roger the Cat. I searched around a little bit and luckily Trish Peters, who I actually met on the set of the film City Garden, and she has a cat named Mazikeen. So we cat set Mazzy and we used her in No Return and she was less than excited to be on set. She did not want to get out from under the bed. Eventually we had her for one short scene Barely. She was supposed to be in four scenes total, and we only used her in one scene. After our primary production had wrapped, Mazzy kind of warmed up with me, and we became pals. So I took my camera and I shot some beauty shots of Mazzy around the house, and then I interspersed these, these montages of the cat throughout the film. They kind of symbolize what's on Stanley Poe's mind throughout the film. It was a beautiful sunny day. We were at a house that we'd gotten through Airbnb that Nick set up and it was close to Nationwide Children's Hospital. And that party scene was so much fun. The cake. It was on a very small, round piece of cardboard, and we had to pick it up, and every time I picked it up, and it wasn't on purpose, I swear, every time I picked it up, my finger smushed something on the side of the cake. So I don't know how many times we had to flip that cake around so it didn't look like anything had touched it. I think we got good footage without the thumbprints in the cake. The birthday party scene was just really fun. And we all got like party hats and there's actual cake. <laughs> I couldn't wait till the birthday party scene was over cause then we got cake. I mean, I loved cake. So with this theme of cats, we also included throughout the entire film, sometimes more overtly, like in the newscaster calling Randy the cat burglar and things like that, and then sometimes more subvertly. If you look closely, you'll see cat prints or a cat photo or a cat picture frame or little cat details here and there. And then another theme that I wanted to keep going throughout the film, technology has become interweaving into our everyday life in sometimes really weird ways. And so I wanted to explore that theme as I wrote this script. All of our main characters have this relationship with technology. And of course, the biggest kind of incarnation of, of that obsession with technology is Randy. He's so obsessed with documenting his life that he attaches a GoPro on his head when he robs houses. And we had a lot of fun shooting those scenes too. I was able to play the homeowner and then he has the GoPro, we hit record, and then he breaks into my house, ransacks, steals stuff, and then storms out the front door. It felt very intense when we shot it and hopefully it comes across that way on screen. <coughs> There's also certain like numbers that I wanted to include. Scene number seven, the time on the clock was supposed to read 7.13. When it came time to shoot scene seven, we were moving very quickly and I just decided on set to kind of scrap that detail. Now, as luck would have it during scene four, that time 7.13 is actually on the clock as Alex is checking out the pose. Yeah, so that time ended up making it into scene four just by pure coincidence. Who the hell was that? It's nothing, it's just work. It's not gonna take very long, just go. And take this 
please. All right, well, let me know if you need anything. We also wanted to include like some Easter eggs throughout the film. There's a few places where I was able to sneak in some literature to kind of flesh out the character a little bit without saying a whole lot. And I will tell Helena how you showed up at my house in the middle of the night with your dick in your hand and your gray pubes blowing in the wind. But then it's also an opportunity for me to sneak in books by friends of mine. I have this pen that I was given when my improv comedy group did a show for a birthday party years ago, but it's a great pen. It's like the Seinfeld pen that you can write upside down on space, only this one has a light. When you start to write, it lights up where you're writing. So I was able to write Liz's address on my hand, and that was a suggestion that I just came up with the, the day before we shot it, because I was writing with that pen, and I thought, this is gonna be a nighttime scene where I can maybe make this work. Oh, wait a second. I love you, but I'm not doing shit that requires a gun. Okay. I can't do time like that again. I'm on probation. Oh my god. You And it was the Saturday of the Arlo Festival, and we didn't know this at the time, but Governor DeWine had shut down a lot of the audience participation with the Arnold because of the looming pandemic and we just didn't know how much our lives were about to change. We were a packed house of probably 30 to 40 people at different times with all the parents and kids who were there. It really was a moment in time because within a week everything had changed. The NBA had shut down its season, the state lockdowns and stay-at-home orders went into place. So we filmed at the beginning of March before everything kind of went bonkers. I would just want to thank everybody who was involved, uh, all of our cast, all of our crew, everyone in front of the camera and behind, all the parents of the child actors who were involved. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for all of your hard work. I truly feel blessed and grateful to have such an awesome cast and crew. What's almost said was fun, phenomenal. I'll say a 10 out of 10, highlight of the year. I just want to say to everyone that worked in the film, thank you for working with me. I just think it was fun to work with them too. I'm also excited to see a film that has both myself and my youngest daughter, Alexandra, in it. I enjoyed my time, man. I even got a chance to take some pictures and doing the little, uh, little ready set action, little clip thing, marker, the marker thing. I did that. And I'm fine. I'm not gonna lie, I'm like a fucking kid. Cause I always wanted to do that. It was a total blast getting to work with all the actors and actresses that did an amazing job and all the amazing crew members and just everybody who was able to make this film what it is. I just think it was a very fun film. It'd be the funnest I've ever been in. And I hope you really enjoy the movie because I had a blast making it. It was a lot of fun. I'm just really hoping that people enjoy this film just as much as we enjoyed making it. But it was so much fun. Everybody behind the scenes and in front of the camera was so committed and I really, really hope it, it shows and that you enjoy No Return when you watch it. I'm just grateful that I was able to be a part of it. A plus, it was just a, a real pleasure. There's just so much that goes into making a movie. Everybody involved with this film really pulled their own weight. There's no denying the amount of effort and the, the amount of work that went into this project. Everybody contributed to making this film a, a stronger piece and I'm very proud of this picture. Cinema Slice making great movies. As a whole, I'm just really thankful that I got to be part of this project, really thankful I got to work with the people that I did and I'm just really pumped for this to be shared with the world. It was absolutely perfect. It was everything I dreamed about. I'm really excited to have been a part of this project and I hope that you enjoy the film, No Return. Thanks for taking the time to check out No Return. I hope that you continue to support independent cinema and slice the planet. Slice.